This is Kelly Hill, executive editor for RCR Wireless News. I'm here on the show floor at Mobile World Congress Los Angeles 2019 with William Graff of yes. TUV Rhineland. How Thank are you. you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good, good. And uh, so why don't we start off and talk a little bit about uh, 5G has been a huge topic here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some challenges associated with 5G mm -hmm. transmitting at millimeter wave frequencies. Yes. Tell us a little bit about TUV Rhineland's perspective on some of the testing challenges and um, that are associated with 5G. Okay. Well, basically, when you're talking about 5G and doing testing there, you have to, in many ways, you have to throw out the existing rule book that you got for going and doing a lot of this kind of testing. Um, and mostly it's because of the frequencies you're dealing with are so high, the wavelengths are so small, uh, it's difficult, very, very difficult to get calibrated antennas. It's difficult enough to go and get the signal to pass down a wire. You have to actually do plumbing instead. There's, there's a lot of challenges there. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of unknowns there too. Uh, a, a lot of the basic research for millimeter wave actually goes all the way back to the 1950s and 60s when you were dealing with uh, military radar. But still, you know, it's to try to go and take all of that body of knowledge and kind of rekindle it and bring it into the commercial laboratory world is just very challenging all, all the way around. Uh, there's no way to go and really, you know, make it any simpler than that. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you're not necessarily going to use a three meter or five meter, uh, uh, sorry, three meter or ten meter site. You have to deal with different antenna uh, uh, attenuation factors, such as if you get high enough, you got to worry about oxygen attenuation. All sorts of different kind of things that happen. So that's. That's the short story. <laughs> How's that do? <laughs> yes, no, I mean, and, and, and those things are playing out, I think, in the commercial space now yeah. as we see people getting millimeter wave into the field. Uh, one of the other things that you do is uh, serve on the TCB, the Telecom yes. uh, Certification Board, uh, Correct. over at the FCC. Tell us a little bit about the regulatory conversations that are happening around 5G. Okay, well, uh, there again, a lot of the regulatory, well, first off, what we do, uh, the TCB Council, we are the guys that actually do the physical equipment um, authorization. So we are actually testing the hardware. We're not software testers. And we make sure the hardware by itself has the capabilities of making sure that it stays within the rules. The rules itself are really just coming online. They're really very new in many, many respects right now. Um, the oldest one I think you have right now is the Part 96, the uh, Citizens Band Radio Service. Mm -hmm. But the, even that's a slow frequency. That's 3.5 gigahertz. Yeah. But if you're dealing with the higher frequency stuff, then you've got the upper microwave flexible use band, which is 30, you know, Part 30, uh, yeah, Part 30. And then you start getting into some very interesting bands that are just now being cleared up and where you have the more interesting millimeter wave uh, topics that you have to work with. Right now, it's so new that the FCC doesn't even have any procedures that they're really, really working on that they really think that they're confident with. In other words, we could test something now to what we think the FCC will want, mm -hmm. uh, but it could very well be that by the time uh, a year or two goes around, the FCC might change your mind and have some different ways that want to kind of fine tune the measurement procedures. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very interesting world. And so the differences between, that you're seeing between the regulatory conversations around, you know, maybe what we might consider lower millimeter wave band, you mm -hmm. know, the 28, the 39, mm -hmm. sounds like that's pretty different than what you might see at something like, you know, 47 or 60. And that could very well be true. I mean, the, the rules might be written pretty much the same, but uh -huh the laws of physics change a little bit. Yes. Okay, so that's going to change the way you have to go and do the testing. Uh, you might, instead of measuring power just with a power meter, mm -hmm. you might be measuring power as to the power across an area, um, you know, yeah, total radiated power. But then the total radiated power techniques are not necessarily, you know, really well defined yet with the FCC. Okay. Okay. So it's interesting. We just don't know exactly how it's going to all pan out. And then you add beam forming and oh man, the that's a, that's a whole to that's that. a whole thing all together. Yeah, <laughs> beam forming. That's one of my favorite things to go and like like just imagine. I mean, from a, a, a user standpoint, it's going to appear like if you have massive MIMO with beam forming, it's going to mm -hmm. appear like a radio signal can go down the street, make a left hand corner, and hit just one individual. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. And then, but how do you ensure that on the testing side? Ah, <laughs> now you have the idea. Well, we don't know yet. And that's, that's, gonna, one, of that's one of the challenges. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, there's all sorts of things that have to be done, not only with that, but also RF exposure. With RF exposure, you, you now have to go and, and make your measurements uh, knowing not just what the power is at any given instant in time, but you have to know a little bit about the phase relationships of that radio wave at any given instant. It's, and that even goes and gets even more complicated when you're dealing with uh, um, steerable arrays of some kind or another because it, it, uh, it's just a complex mathematical process. So even things like uh, we might have known very well in the, uh, 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 the cell world, your SAR machines for going and measuring RF exposure, those things will look completely different. Okay. So we can say with the millimeter wave stuff, your SAR machines are going to look different. Your test range where you're going to be making the measurements are going to look different. The, essentially, the instrumentation by which you actually go and do any of these things is going to be different. We're taking the entire rule book and we're, we're tearing it up and throwing it away. So then, what do you see happening on the test and measurement uh, equipment side uh, in terms of development? Or are, are there interesting things happening over there that are trying to accommodate the needs of testing these higher frequencies? Well, certainly the, the, the one that seems to be gelling quicker than anything is the test range itself. Okay. Where you have some kind of compact range where you actually have um, a, your device sending out its, its, its fundamental signal to basically a curved mirror which then goes and refle reflected to a measurement antenna. Okay. And it's relatively small. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. And of course that's going to be dependent upon frequency and so forth. You, you, I would imagine it would be very difficult to make a single chamber to go and cover everything. But you know, you, you do have those kinds of ideas that you can work with. Um, when it comes to making power measurements, uh, I can see that there are some people that are developing these compact, uh, you know, OTA chambers, kind of like this thing there, except a miniature version. Okay. Uh, one that can handle the higher frequencies. But there again, that assumes that you're going to be having just very small little devices that you can go and actually fit in there. Um, making that same kind of measurement, say, over uh, something that's very large will be even a different kind of challenge altogether. We might see actually <laughs> where the FCC might just give up at some point and just say, okay, give us a computer simulation and rather than some, you know, some test results. But we're not anywhere near that yet.